Louisiana's contribution to the effort of World War II may best be explained by simple things like these abandoned roads at the old Camp Tioga. They can be best explained, perhaps, one contribution at a time. In New Roads, we'll find a reunion of one band of Louisiana boys, the 760th Tank Battalion, Company C. Ivy Labatute of New Roads is hosting a reunion of longtime friends. He's 79 now, and most of his comrades are about that. They go back a good bit, back to when Sergeant Labatute was 19 years old. Back to Stanton, Winter Bridge, Bronx, New York. Looted off the from Connecticut in New York. Now, all them Yankees, and they had me as a driver from New Roads, Louisiana, right here. And that's a picture I took in Rome. The soldiers of the 760th Tank Battalion come from all over the country, but 80-year-old Sergeant Robert Richard only had to drive from Shreveport. Sixty years ago, he signed up in plain dealing. I decided to join the Army. So, at first my mother wasn't going to let me, and I told her, I said, either I join the Army, and you know where I'm at, or I'm going to go and join, and you won't know where I'm at. So she decided she wanted to know where I was at. How old were you? I was uh, 19. Cut the scrolls and on the rail of rock and the brawler, brawler, too. The 760. The they joined from Plain Dealing, Louisiana, to Muskegon, Michigan, the home of tank driver George Caron. Did you do it out of patriotism or did you do it out of. When I heard Pearl Harbor, I was damn mad. I went right down to sign up. The next day? Yeah. A lot of guys did, didn't they? That's right. The Army trained many of them together, first at Camp Bowie, Texas, and then at Fort Benning, Georgia. They thought they might be sent to England, but when some pamphlets teaching Arabic phrases arrived, they all knew they were headed to North Africa. We were solely there to keep as many German troops as possible down there so that they could make the big invasion of France. And if that was so, that's, we did that. <laughs> we were burning cork from off the cork trees, and cooking some eggs that we'd buy from Arabs. Besides mauling and invading most of Europe, Germany had helped Italy conquer oil fields and shipping routes across the Middle East. The boys of the 760th, like tens of thousands of ours, crossed the Atlantic in crowded troop carriers, wary of U-boat attacks, but in high spirits. And they'd been hauling prisoners on that thing. And they had one fellow with us from Tennessee there. He was hairy as a, as a gorilla. <laughs> one in pool from, from, from Tennessee. When he shaved, he had to separate it from down here, <laughs> to just draw a line, separate. And so, old one and Pooh got a, well, I don't know if I should mention that on there, if you don't know, you, you, whatever you want to see is all right on there? Yeah, it's all right, go ahead. But poor Rascal had crab lice, and he had them all over him. So we laid him down on a shelter half, and we shared him as clean as a wiener. Arab ports were quickly confiscated, and American supplies and arms began pouring in. The 760th faced the Germans' best tank, the Mark VI Tiger, with an 88 millimeter gun. It was 1942. Sergeant and tank commander Ray Hutchins. The hand-to-hand -hand fighting of the infantry was the most unusual experience that I'd seen. We actually got involved in that, you know. They, they, they was did hand-to-hand -hand fighting, and that's rough. <laughs> Sergeant and Tank Commander Harry Schroeder of Wisconsin and Tank Driver Carl Tedder of Georgia. By the door, there was an old lady sitting standing there about 80 years old. There was a little girl there about six years old. I was standing in front of him, and he let that shell go, and I don't know to this day where that shell hit. That woman and the boy, both of them two women, though, the old lady and the kid were both dead. It pulled me off the ground, but I don't know if I, but I left the, the sidewalk, I went up. They had caught me in the leg, and uh, the scare was so great, I underneath the tank. And I laid there, and, and I looked out. When it cleared, when the dust cleared away, there was 
Italians laying all over the circle. And I couldn't get by them. I had to sit there, and they zeroed in on me. That German 88 millimeter, that's what got me. How much damage? 45, it took 45 pieces of shrapnel out of me at one time. That finger shot through the nose all the way through, up and down his side and his arm. 45 pieces of shrapnel at one time. That's the worst thing. I went to the hospital right after that. They kept me in the hospital 30 days and sent me back. Through blinding sand, temperatures inside those old tanks of 140 degrees, through setbacks, and every day picking up straggling and surrendering German and Italian soldiers, they pushed through North Africa. Then across the Mediterranean, and up through Italy, across pontoon bridges, through landmines, the gruesome battle for Casino, and after unimaginable struggle and unbearable loss, on to Rome. We were just a GHQ tank battalion that could be put in the line anywhere to beef up the lines where they expected an attack or anything like that. That was our purpose. Do you think about sometimes the men in the company who didn't come back? Yeah, I'm not urged. The 760th Tank Battalion had been on duty for four years and three months. Two years, nine months, they served overseas. It was not all dire struggle, though. The men had their laughs, too. They still tell the story of the missing can of fruit cocktail. Daddy about he said that it was I don't care what he tells you. I didn't have nothing to do with it. He told us the fruit cocktail story. Uh, he said he yeah. <laughs> To this day, no one has fessed up to stealing the fruit cocktail. When the job was done, they came home to plain dealing and new roads and everywhere else. But they never forgot their friends. In the early 1960s, they began a tradition that lasts to this day. These reunions are held at the homes of their comrades nearly every year. Home movies prove the camaraderie they've always enjoyed. But the reunions have become more infrequent. Each year, there are fewer friends to visit. You know, we have a feeling of closeness. and When we walk by those that are here, we remember those that are not. And we're always sitting with memories lingering in our minds. People ask us, you know, well, what was war like and all of these things. Well, it's something, one of those things you can't describe. It's one of those things that you remember incidents now and again, but incidents you don't really want to comment on. Theirs is one more Louisiana story we can count among this our meager sampling of war tales, thousands of stories of thousands of men who risked their lives to save millions can be found anywhere in Louisiana. Our latest search for lost Louisiana has turned up only a scattering of these stories. These few tales offer good reason, though, why we'd best be proud of our Louisiana home front and our Louisiana heroes. <laughs>